well, um, the election's over. And is anyone else so glad that it is? This has been the longest election cycle in my adult life. Like, I need a break. And frankly, I think I'm still drunk from yesterday. So I'm going to keep all of this short today and just say, hello, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. So glad the election is over. Let's make stuff. Yeah, super not kidding. Like, I'm exhausted. This has been whew, so long. And so now we are, you know, moving on to reality because the election season is over. So, uh, hello, how's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You're at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for day 216 of 365 days of soap. And today we are doing a brush embroidery soap technique. Now, the reason that we're doing this is because there were two different bars yesterday that were made for RBG. And one of them I didn't quite like the lace pattern on. And so the Soap Prentice decided that she wanted to do a cool lace pattern using a different technique on the bars that I didn't quite like. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. A brush embroidery pattern is very similar to what you would do on a cake. In fact, it started as a cake decorating te technique. So essentially you're taking like a royal icing and you are going over fondant with brushes and all of the things. And it's a very cool, very beautiful and actually not super time consuming technique. So let's go to the video and you guys can watch George May in action and we will talk all about the brush embroidery thing. So it is the day after the election and we are fixing the first round of the RGB, our RVG soaps from yesterday. And we are going to do that using a brush embroidery technique on the soaps. So Georgia May is making just a little teeny tiny batch of soap. And she is going to want to mix this to a light to medium trace. So the actual recipe of the soap, like the formulation of the oils, really doesn't matter unless you're doing some really like a lot of embroidery. If you're doing a lot of soaps, then you might wanna work with a more slow moving batter and then just mix it to the trace that you want as you go. But really with something like this, it doesn't, the oils aren't super important. Just like when you're piping soap, the oils aren't super important. It's all about what texture, what trace you're doing everything at. So if you, work with too runny of a batter, it's all just going to, well, be too runny. It's not going to actually hold up on its own and create any sort of lace patterns. And if you work with too thick of a batter, you're not gonna be able to get the cool designs into it to make it look like brush strokes. So it's all a thing and there's definitely a technique to all of it, which we will talk about more as we watch Georgia, <clears throat> you know, brush embroider these really still awesome soaps the rbg soaps these ones were just the ones that i did just on the vinyl placemat instead of the silicone mold and i don't think the um the lace really showed up well enough so she is going to show you a new technique to fix them so the brush embroidery technique is actually a technique that is done in soap making quite a bit or in cake making quite a bit and you're taking essentially like a royal icing and doing little patterns with a wet paintbrush 
onto a fondant. And when you're doing it for, for cakes, you, the, the frosting should be at a soft peak. Now what that really translates to in soap making is basically medium trays. And that's not quite what she has right there. So see how it's still kind of runny. And so you do want a slightly thicker batter than what she's working with with this one, but not much. And the whole idea with this is you take a, you know, a wet paintbrush or you dip your paintbrush in water as you need to and you pull different sizes of brushes essentially through the soap that you have put on the on the soap. Yeah. <laughs> um to pull some different texture from your original line. And this was actually it was a challenge it was one of Amy Warden's soap challenges, like, I don't know, a year ago. And it's so funny with the soap challenges. We actually, I, I like buy them every month and do the things or whatever, but we never submit anything. And we very rarely even look at the things because we have big plans that we're going to participate in the soap challenge, but I haven't submitted anything for the soap challenge in years. I've just been so busy. And so I always, the date always lapses, but it's fun to see, you know, what they're doing anyway. It's a really cool thing. So for, you know, new soap makers that have not heard of it, go check it out. Amy Warden's Soap Challenge. It's fun. Every month there's a new challenge and it's awesome and totally cool. And you get to learn a new technique and there's like a video as well as like written instructions. And then you submit your, your designs if you want. If you don't want, you've learned a new technique and that's cool. And so I think they did this one about a year ago and Georgia May had actually expressed an interest in it at that point. And so I'm like, okay, here you go. And I sent her the login information for the soap challenge so she could go check it out. And she played around with it with multiple colors doing like a Northern Lights thing. And it was cute. And for, you know, first attempt, it was really very good. And then we forgot to submit anything really <laughs> and, and so this is the problem that you're going to be having if your batter is not the right consistency so you see how when she put that that blob on it sort of flattened out that circle flattened out that's because the batter is not thick enough to do a proper pull with the with, with the brush and so eventually the soap that is in the pot or in the squeeze bottle either way will just by nature of it being mixed with lime doing the things and it's just sitting it will thicken up enough for her to pull some really complicated designs through but this is sort of the you know like she's figuring it out and looking at the textures and doing the things and another cool thing about brush stroke the the brush embroidery technique is yes again it was originally done like, cakes and we as soapers we love to do weird things for you know soaps like I did the the thing with the the thing the marble pour that was it was weird we like taking things that were developed in other areas and see how we can do things in soap and so this was kind of how it was born from the soap world and it's a it's a reasonably easy and straightforward process and it's not super duper time consuming as soon as you get your batter to the right consistency and that's going to be you know the biggest key with all of it but also in addition to it being a cake thing you're also combining art elements because the pattern of the the stroke and what it looks like as far as the lace pattern will change based on what kind of brush you use which is you know, that's cool. And that's something that Georgia May totally knows because she is an artist, she works with brushes a lot. So she is familiar with what all the different brushes do. And I mean, lucky for, luckily we have, because it's in our shop, we also do the, the paint your own pottery stuff, right? I mean, we don't do a lot of it right now because 2020 and there are so many restrictions and things. But we, as a result, have a whole lot of brushes laying around. No! 
Hi, come here, baby. Oh, so Miss Mazikeen is in here and she's wanting attention. So that was the very loud bark and I'm sorry if it broke your eardrums. She wants to come play. And that is the first one that she did with the soap batter being it's, you know, with the consistency that it is. Again, a little bit thin. And so as she continues on in all of this, it will start to thicken up. And when it thickens up, that's when you're gonna get the really good detail from all of the, the soap that you're piping onto the, well, again, the soap. And see, like right there, that's actually a good example. That's, uh, that soap is getting thicker and it's getting to be um, the right consistency and the right weight, essentially, to, for it to hold its shape, like its original form, and then just pull some of the soap away to create the cool lace embroidery looking pattern like you know like embroidery did you guys ever do embroidery i uh my my grandmother was like the og maker that would i mean we did all of the things with her we learned how to paint you know bob ross happy little trees we learned how to sew kind of right but my grandma she was she was kind of militant about about the sewing thing so in reality my sewing skills are self-taught on a machine because my grandmother never got to the point of teaching me on the machine because I had to learn how to hand sew before I could be allowed to use the machine and embroidery was one of those things that she would um, have me do to learn how to hand sew and I, if it was wrong she would like rip things out and uh, make me do it again. And she only was able to do that with me, like, cause that's like how she taught my mother how to sew as well. And my mom is a really accomplished seamstress. Like she's really very good at it. She makes awesome things. Right now she's super into quilts and she makes some beautiful quilts. But that was how my grandma taught my mom how to sew. And it worked for her, but for me, I was the kind of kid that was like, well, I mean, if you're gonna keep messing up my work, I'm not gonna do it anymore. And so I just stopped. So as a result, I never actually learned how to hand sew, but I do remember embroidery type lessons and it was always the goal to kind of get exactly that. You see how it is holding its shape in the middle, but then you just have little, little like thread patterns going away from the thing like, like you've sewn it, exactly, essentially. And it's very beautiful. I. Again, very cool technique. It requires a, well, it requires patience first to get your batter to the right consistency. And it requires a bit of speed to get it done reasonably quickly before your batter gets too thick. But I think most importantly, it requires an artist's eye. And that's not something that I really have people tell me that I'm wrong when I say that, that I'm definitely an artist, but I don't see that. Like I, as I'm watching her do this, I'm completely blown away. Like, oh yeah, it's beautiful. You're making lace. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I wouldn't have even thought to put the patterns in like this, like her leaving the, the one row of just dots, whereas the other row of dots got brushed out. Although she couldn't brush that one out too. Cool. Either way, it would have looked awesome, but I, I like that. It's very cute. And that one's super beautiful. I love that. And to finish it off, she's going to put a little dot on that. See, I mean, that's an artist eye. And that's something that I don't really think I have, but George May has it in spades. And that's super pretty. I love that one as well. And by now, the batter should be... Oh, see, that's cute. Was that intentional? Did you do it? it they they kind of work together. It's like a quilt, really. You're piecing it all together so it, you know, makes sense out of things that maybe don't look like they should make sense. I love that. And the soap batter in this should definitely be, oh yeah, that's such a good consistency for this, for sure. So like the rest of her soaps are going to create really cool brush strokes throughout all of it that will create the awesome ridges coming off of her initial placement of the of the soap. Oh, she's gonna put a little flower in it too. That's cool, I like that. 
You see, we've got a wrecking ball dog in here. She seriously wants some attention. Little Miss Mazikeen is, she's just, she wants, she wants the love. She's getting a little big to actually get up on the lap at this point. It's crazy how fast they grow. And her pretty flowers are also crazy. I wonder if she's gonna pull a brush through those or she's gonna leave them as is. Cause I guess you could go either way with that. If you just did cool brush strokes off of the, the lines and left the flowers as is, it could be super pretty. But again, Georgia May is the artist, so she knows what she's doing with all of these things. And I am just here along for the ride to watch the awesomeness along with you guys, because she's great at all the things and it is, you know, this is no different, of course. And yeah, see the difference there between the, uh, the first soap that she did, which was kind of like the, the batter was very loose to this one. So as she pulls things through, there's little lines for the, totally works out. Oh, she is going to pull it out into a flower. That's cute. I like that. That's super adorable. Yeah, there are so many things that you can do with this. I really love the ones that she did like a year ago and she was messing around with them and she did the Northern, Northern Lights thing because I think she did multiple colors. And so you just do some lines of colors one underneath another and then you kind of pull them all into the... It's super beautiful. And, but the, obviously the, this one is, it, it's lace for the RBG soaps because the leather and lace is the scent and it's the black ropes with the lace collar and all of the things. And so we have another version of the RBG soaps and a really cool, fun technique. Now, again, as I said, this is not something that you really need to worry about any kind of special batter for. Some pores you, you legitimately need a special oil blend for, depending on the complexity. But for something like this, the biggest trick is going to be all about the trace. Like that's going to be what will make or break a soap like this. Because again, if you're thinking in, in baker's terms, or if you are a baker and you know how those things go down, then you will be, well, hello to you too, Mazikeen then you will understand, you know, soft peaks and all the things. So yeah, you're looking for like medium peaks, soft peaks, all that stuff. And yeah, so this is further on into the thing. Look how pretty those all are because there's more definition between the lines because the soap batter is thickening up, which is awesome. And I don't know how often George May used the brush in this to wet the brush to pull things through. I she would have to let us know. I imagine I would probably be dipping the brush with each soap because, you know, I'm just me. But well, we're gonna put some more together. That's kind of cute. See if we can make them make sense. Again, it's like quilting. Just put them together. Maybe that works. Maybe. It's, it's, it's like Tetris, it's a puzzle. I, I love it. That's so pretty. And that is it, day uh, 216, the brush embroidery pattern on soap. Again, usually used in cake decorating, but it's a fun thing to do with soap for sure. See, once it all firms up and the soap you know, solidifies, all of the detail and the definition come out and they're just super pretty. That's a gorgeous lace pattern right there. I love that. See, not super complicated. It's actually a pretty straightforward process and it's all about the thickness of the batter, really. And so with everything in soap making, it really does come down to the batter consistency. So that is the brush embroidery technique, which is super cool. And I think it adds a different level of, you know, awesome to the RBG bars. So if you are interested in the RBG soaps, you can totally find them on the website at soapandclay.com. If you are interested in following me on social media, I am there, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you are interested in more soapy antics, uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be fun. We do this every day, as the name 365 Days of Soap might suggest. And yeah, tomorrow will be a new round of awesomeness, and it is getting into the holiday season. So 
a lot of the stuff that we will be doing will be, you know, holiday themed moving forward and winter themed and that's cool. So yeah, subscribe. For those of you who are subscribed, thank you so much for being subscribed. I super appreciate you guys. As always, you rock. You are unbelievably awesome human beings and thank you for being so. I am done for today. I'm actually going to go nurse my hangover and, you know, take a nap because tired and I will see you guys all again tomorrow. Bye.